After the attack on Pearl Harbor, December 7, 1941, paranoia against any person of Japanese descent ran high within the country. Reacting to this sentiment in February 1942, President Roosevelt ordered the internment of all Japanese Americans into holding areas, mainly racetracks, stables, and fairgrounds, while concentration camps were constructed throughout the western interior of the United States. Hundreds of thousands of Japanese Americans living on the U.S. mainland were physically removed and relocated to holding centers during the first three months of 1942. They were stripped of their property and dignity as the camps with barracks were hastily constructed. Kari Yo Nakagawa, historian, author, and filmmaker, tells us about life in the camps, the nightmare effect on the people incarcerated, and how their love for baseball, which was a major part of the culture prior to the order for internment, brought some relief to the Japanese Americans in the camps. For Japanese Americans, 120,000 Americans of Japanese ancestry had to become what the government called enemy aliens and were uh, basically rounded up, put into uh, county fairgrounds for six months while they built the permanent camps in the 10 different desert wastelands throughout the United States. So not only baseball came to a, a halt for Japanese Americans, but their civil liberties, their constitutional rights, their homes, their businesses, their farms were all pretty much lost at that point. The barracks were basically 20 feet wide by 100 foot long. You had ropes as quadrants that would have a bed sheet that would be your wall so for young couples, you know, it was unfortunate they never had any privacy. Of course, nobody had any privacy because of the conditions. Big families, elders, you know, they were tar paper barracks. The winters were brutal. The summers were searing heat, 120 degrees. A lot of the internees would build little foxholes underneath the barracks to have a little bit of cooling. In Arizona, they had double roofs because the heat was so intense. The conditions were pretty amazing. Now, forget about privacy, your bathrooms. You had to take communal showers with the rest of the public. Toilets never had any partitions. So a lot of people had health issues because they would hold it so long that they couldn't go till 2 or 3 in the morning. And then even then, a lot of people caught on. That's the time where you could have some privacy. The conditions for the hospitals were very um, basic. They barely carried hydrogen peroxide and bandages. For ball players, when they'd see these brown windstorms coming towards them, they would run to the barracks because unless they had cloth or a newspaper in between the cracks on the floor, the uh, dust storms were so intense, the dust would shoot up out of the uh, floor two or three feet high. So it really took a tremendous amount of ingenuity, but they also had a tremendous amount of professionals that in their past life, plumbers, carpenters, uh, craftspeople, that could uh, enhance their conditions and make it bearable and livable. And for the elders, it was, it was really tough. The elders couldn't speak their native language or practice their religion or faith. They kind of took everything away that was part of their Americana upbringing, and they had to start from the basics again. And uh, once rules got relaxed, I think the internees and the uh, administrators and teachers all felt that they were in this together. There was no treachery. There was no espionage going on. So they were able to order bats and balls and equipment from their local uh, hometown sporting good friend of the family or others that they contacted. Sears Roebuck became very popular in the camps when they would go into the canteens to order different goods and products. Most of them brought uh, cash from their accounts. A lot of the accounts were frozen in July and August of 1941, but the bombing of Pearl Harbor didn't happen till December. So there were some undercurrents that this was starting to happen even before the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Japanese Americans economically were becoming an amazing force. And every city in California, Oregon, and Washington, if you follow the money, will show you where the uh, xenophobia and the paranoia started of that era. The internment occurred more from racism than any real threat to the country. Anyone with Japanese blood was considered a threat and was placed in the camps located mainly throughout the western United States. Incredibly, baseball fields were constructed, 
uniforms hand-sewn, and bats and balls obtained bring baseball and hope for better days ahead to the Japanese Americans in the camps. The story continues as we look at U.S. history through the eyes of baseball, brought to us by AmericanInnings.org.